Hey it's Harish and today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the UG UE tall drawing tablet and creating an illustration in Clipsudo Paint using it. Before I get started, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the people over at UG for sending this to me to review. Although I received this product for free, I will be giving my honest opinion of it and stay tuned till the end for the full pros and cons list, as well as my personal review of whether or not I should buy it. So to start, on top is this foam screen to protect the tablet and then the actual tablet itself which I'll be unboxing later. Moving on, we have this pen which is battery free so it's very light and it has 16,384 pressure sensitivity levels. It also comes with two express keys that I set up later. Next up are some wires. It comes with a USB-C to C cable and a USB-C to A cable that you can use to connect the tablet to its external device. And finally, there is a quick start guide that lists all the supplies and how to connect it to your tablet or whatever device you're using. And there is also a warranty card in case your tablet has any issues or problems. Here's the tablet itself, and it's way bigger than I thought it'd be. It's 11.9 inches in dimension and it has 8 shortcut keys which I'll be setting up later and explaining. Moving on from that hopefully satisfying feel, we're going to start drawing. Connecting this to the device was a bit tedious just because the laptop that I usually use for drawing tablets wasn't compatible with this one, so I had to find a new one and download my drawing program onto it again. By the way, I am using Clip Studio Paint for this illustration. I think I only really used the flat marker tool for this entire drawing from sketching to coloring to rendering because it is very versatile and it can create sharp edges but also blend colors together pretty well. Here, I was just doodling and trying to get a feel for the tablet, and of course I had to draw Gojo and an eye, which is classic for any artist trying a new medium. So now I'm going to explain a bit about my express keys. Here's like a detailed diagram, but to explain them a bit more, the top two change the pen size from like bigger to smaller, while the bottom two zoom the canvas in or out, which I did use quite a bit. The top arrow on the circle adds a layer, and the right one is an eyedropper. The left one switches the tool to a marker, which was my most used tool for this drawing, and the bottom arrow of the circle is the undo button, which is definitely my favorite button. I definitely didn't use all the keys for this drawing, but they provided many to use, so if you're into using like a bunch of shortcuts for your art, then I think this tablet is definitely for you. So the main two that I used were the undo button and the color picker. My pen was originally set to undo and redo, but once I started coloring and rendering, I switched the it to the color picker and the undo button just because it was easier than having to go to the toolbar and pick the eyedropper tool every time. I think this drawing took me maybe a total of 5 hours, which I did find surprising because I usually spend around 7-8 to eight hours on Procreate for my main drawings, um, and I'd say that the thing that sped up the process most was the express key, so they are definitely very helpful. Going back to the drawing, if you haven't guessed already, I am drawing Nubilet from Genshin Impact. He is a playable Hydro character in the game, and I think he's like a dragon of some sorts? Okay, I just googled it, and it turns out that he is a dragon of water, whatever that means, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the Archon quest. He is a catalyst user, which I thought was pretty cool, and for some reason, I always assumed that he'd be a sword user. Side note, the way that he poses in game is so similar to Hawk Moth from Miraculous Ladybug. My friend pointed that out to me the other day, and now I can't unsee it. Yuji also kindly provided many discount codes for you guys to use, so make sure to check the description for details regarding that. They have many discounts on their Amazon page as well as their global shop now, so now is the perfect time to purchase your own Yuji tablet, whichever one you want based on your preferences. So I have had this tablet for a while now, they sent it back in August, and I just got around to editing this video. I've had most of like the unboxing footage and everything else for the drawing for a couple of months now, but thank you so much to them for being patient. It did take me a while to edit this just because I wanted this review to be really good and to actually like experience using the tablet. I also did use an old tablet stand which I got a while ago just to help with my posture because I didn't want to be like looking down while doing this drawing because I knew it would take a while since I was doing a finished illustration. Moving on, the sketching process, which is what I'm doing now, was super fun, which I did, really f I did find strange because usually I struggle with sketching so much, especially on drawing tablets. I think it definitely was because of the pen like pressure sensitivity levels, just because the way that the pen glides on the tablet itself feels like I'm doing traditional art, which I'm not, it's digital, but it just reminds me so much of sketching in my sketchbook, which is definitely more comforting. I also just left this sketch as like the liner in a sense. I definitely didn't do like another layer for the liner, which is definitely a good decision because it would have taken forever and I didn't have the patience for that. Especially since this is a Genshin Impact character and their details are super complicated, even though this is only a bust up, it did take me so long to figure out all the outfit details because the top part of his drawing, especially like the collar area, was so detailed. Anyways, I went ahead and I started adding the base colors using this Millie pen, I think, 
Originally the background was like a dark blue color, but I changed it to white towards the end when I started rendering just because I liked it better. I also did put it into Procreate at the very end to treat the color values because the way that the colors are displayed on this tablet can differ from how it'll look on Instagram, which is where I post all my digital art. After adding the base colors, I go ahead and add some basic shading. Usually I use the gradient tool on Clip Studio Paint itself just because it's easier and I add like a darker color at the bottom. And here is the finished base colors for the hair and the outfit, but now I am going in with the skin. For that, I just added some blush, which is like the super saturated orange color and some other colors from the environment. For example, in the skin, I added some blues from his outfit and gold. Speaking of which, I also love painting Nuglet's hair because it's white and if I didn't mention this before, I love painting white hair because you can add so many reflecting colors. You can add the skin color onto it, you can add the outfit colors onto it and it just makes it so much fun and just drawing plain white hair is boring so I definitely recommend adding in a bunch of colors into your hair. The outfit was a pain to paint just because there are so many details with like the golden little parts and the ruffles on the collar. Props to the people who do full body drawings of Genshin characters because their outfits are so complex. I literally just did a bust up and I'm already tired. I also really love Nuglet's eyes though and they came out really pretty when I rendered them. Right now they're still looking a little bit iffy but trust me, trust the process and it'll get better. By the way, after I finished adding in all the base colors and like the basic shading, I did go in with a bunch of different lighting modes. I usually go in with like this purple or blue multiply layer and then an add glow layer, layer which is usually like this orange or pink color, and then a screen and a soft glow around the face just to make this character glow a little bit more. After adding in all those layers, I tweak around the layer opacities and then I merge them all together. Then I duplicate that layer with all the added lighting and I start rendering, which is what I'm doing right now. Again, for rendering, I only use that one felt marker brush because it could get sharp and soft edges and I think it matched with my style in general or like the vibe that I was going for here. Rendering is probably one of my favorite parts of doing digital art because usually my drawing looks super bad before the rendering stage and after rendering, I see my art enter a new level that I didn't even know was possible and it just makes my vision really come together, especially because it's so much fun to blend together all the colors I created with the new layer modes and adding in all that intense lighting, so it definitely looks really nice. Like for example, right now you can see me going in and coloring the hair with all these purple shades and these pinks and these blues by the way his hair is like it does have some blue strips in it and i don't know if i made them too dark or not because they did look a little bit off from the reference picture i was using multiple references though some of them were in game and others were fan art so they do they might look a little bit different from each other but yeah Usually while I'm rendering, I also like to go in and add in some fake liner, which is what I like to call it. Basically, I go ahead and outline like the shapes using a darker color in comparison to what they were shaded with, and this usually acts as a liner of sorts. I don't like you doing like regular liner just because it takes so much time and it's not worth it because I'm going to render over and choose a different color anyways, so I feel like it's just better to do this faux liner in my rendering phase than go ahead and do it twice. My hand also did start getting cramps after a while, so I did have to take a break and come back later. So I think I spent a total of three days working on this, but it was very on and off, and I only spent a couple of hours on it every day. So now for the promised pros and cons list, I'm going to be starting out with the pros. So to start, this is a digital display tablet, so you can see what you're drawing on your screen itself, which is very nice because you don't need to have like a massive amount of hand-eye coordination to be able to draw well, and it's just easier in general. I also really like the texture of the tablet and the way that the pen glides on it. It's definitely very smooth and for the people who like it grainy, you might want to choose a different tablet, but I really like the smooth look because it just reminds me of drawing in my Moleskine sketchbook which has, a, which has a similar texture. It's also big enough so that you don't have to constantly lean forward and look closer like I do with my iPad, which is definitely on a smaller scale. So this can reduce strain on the eyes and just makes the drawing process more enjoyable and less time consuming so you don't have to spend time zooming in. Also, it does come with 8 Joker keys, uh, which definitely speed up the drawing process like I said before. Usually, my drawings on Procreate take a lot longer, and if I did have shortcut keys on my iPad, that would make my life a lot easier. And you're also able to customize them super easily on the UG app, which is like this little driver that you have to download, which is overall super easy, and I definitely recommend doing that and setting up your own shortcuts. Right now, this tablet is also on sale for $159, which is super affordable compared to other brands. And I feel like if you are do one, if you are thinking about getting a drawing tablet, this is definitely the time to get it when they are on sale. Overall, I had a very enjoyable experience using this, and now we're going to move on to the cons. So the first con, which is more like a personal preference, is that the pen doesn't come with a grip. I think this is why my hands started cramping a little bit into the rendering process, but it definitely isn't that big of an issue. Moving on to my personal opinion, I'd say that this, this tablet is a very good fit for beginner to pro artists alike. It provides a variety of uses, and I really like the size because it is bigger than my iPad, which is what I usually use, but also it's not too big that it takes up like all the space on my desk, and I still have space on the sides to put whatever else I need. 
I also think it's definitely worth it for the price because it is very good quality and they took a lot of care in packaging it. I also did go ahead and read some other reviews and there wasn't anything that mentioned like bad shipping or anything like that so I think that's definitely a big pro. So overall, I would definitely recommend it if you want to start your digital art journey or continue by getting a new upgrade in size or anything. Anyways, overall, I just want to say thank you so much to Yuji for sending this to me to review. I had a great time using it, and I definitely will be using this again in the future just because the shortcut keys make my life a lot easier, and I had a lot of fun using it because this process was definitely a lot shorter than how long my digital art usually takes me. Anyways, once again, make sure to check the description for the discount codes and the links. And thank you so much for watching till the end. I will see you guys next time. Bye!